Hey, Math 20-2s. Today we're going to look at adding and subtracting radicals. In radicals less than 1, we discover that radical 25 plus radical 16 is not equal to the square root of 25 plus 16. And the same is true for subtraction. Radical 25 minus radical 16 does not equal the square root of 25 minus 16. So adding and subtracting radicals cannot be accomplished by simply adding and subtracting the radicands. That is not true. So let's do a quick investigation then. In order to develop a rule for adding and subtracting radicals, let's complete the work below. A. Use a calculator to investigate which of the following radical statements are true. Circle statements which are true and cross out the statements which are false. <coughs> I want you to pause this video and go ahead and do that. Use your calculators to figure out which ones of these are true and which ones are false. And then do part B. Use the results in A to suggest a rule for adding and subtracting radicals. Once you've completed that, you can restart the video and continue on. Away you go. All right, so what you should have found here is that numbers 1, 4, and 5 do not work. Numbers, sorry, 1, 4, and 6 do not work. Numbers 2, 3, and 5 do work. And then it asks you to use the results and to suggest a rule for adding and subtracting radicals. So what we should notice is... Um, if they've got the same radicand, we keep that radicand and simply add the coefficients. 3 plus 5 is 8. They must also have the same index number. The index number in both these is square root or 2. So in example 3, they have the same radicand of 5. We keep that radicand and simply subtract 8 minus 1. In example 5, they've got the same radicand of 7. We keep that radicand of 7 and we add and subtract the coefficients. 5 minus 3 plus 7 gives us 9 root 7. All right, so you should write that down. Radicals with the same index number and radicand can be added or subtracted by adding or subtracting the coefficients and keeping the radicand. All right. So part C, let's simplify the following, expressing the answer as a mixed radical. So 4 root 10 plus 1 root 10, well, they've got the same index number of 2. That's understood to be there. So they've got the same radical. We keep that radical and radicand root 10, and we add 4 plus 1. 4 plus 1 is 5, so that should be 5 radical 10s. Example 2, 5 root 3 minus 2 root 3. Well, they've got the same index number and radicand, so we're going to keep the radical 3 and go 5, subtract 2. 5 minus 2 is 3. So 5 root 3 minus 2 root 3 is 3 root 3. Part 3, they've got the same radical and index number, so we keep that radical 2, and we add or subtract the coefficients. 9 minus 4 minus 4. 9 minus 4 is 5. 5 minus 4 is 1, so you've got 1 root 2. We leave it just like that. You could put the coefficient of 1 in if you'd like, but you do not need to. All right, so that one doesn't need to be there. Example four, we've got like radicals of radical five and like radicals of radical six. So let's do the radical six first. Eight radical six plus two radical six. Eight plus two is 10 radical sixes. Then we've got minus four root five minus four root five. So negative four minus four is a minus eight, and you keep that radical 5. Okay. Example 5. We've got radical x and radical x. So we keep the radical x. Add the coefficients. 10 plus 5. That's 15 radical x. And finally, example 6. Radical a, another radical a, another radical a. So we keep radical a's. Add or subtract the coefficients. 3 minus 5 is a negative 2. Minus 1 more is a minus 3. All right. <coughs> Moving on to investigation two. Again, it asks you to use a calculator to verify the following statements are true. Uh, root 3 plus root 48 equals 5 root 3. Well, let's do this one together on our calculators. All right. Root 3 plus root 48. Square root 3 plus, oh, clear. Second square root 3 plus... plus the square root of 48. That equals that value. Is that the same as 5 radical 3? 
look to be exactly the same. So in part one, we're going to say, yeah, that's true. Let's try example two. 7 root 8 minus 2 root 50. 7 square root 8 minus 2 square root 50. That gives us a value of 5.656 and so on. Let's see if that's the same as 4 radical 2. And yes, they are identical again. Very nice. So those both work. Does this appear to contradict the rule you wrote in investigation 1? It sure does. Root 3 and root 48 definitely don't look like root 3. And root 8 and root 50 do not look like radical 2. So it does seem to contradict it. Yes. Compare the following by writing each radical in simplest mixed form to show that the rule can be modified. So simplest mixed form, we learned how to do that last last lesson. So we're not going to change radical 3 because there's not a factor of 3 that's a perfect square root other than 1. But we will change radical 48. So 48 can be written as square root 16 times square root 3. And this first radical 3 I'm not going to change. But the square root of 16 is a whole value of 4. And there is no square root of 3, so that's going to be... 4 root 3. So root 48 is the same as 4 root 3. And now we can see that we can add these. They're both radical 3's. Now they're like radicals. And add the coefficients. 1 plus 4 is 5. So that's how come this seems to work if we rewrite these in simplest mixed radical form. So let's do the same thing for part 2. 7 radical 8. Well I can rewrite 8 as 4 times 2. So that's 7 times radical 4 times radical 2 minus 2 times radical 50, well that's the same as radical 25 times radical 2. All right. Now let's simplify inside the brackets. So I've got 7 times, the square root of 4 is 2, there is no square root of 2, minus 2 times, the square root of 25 is 5, but there is no square root of 2, so 5 root 2. And I simplify again by multiplying, so 7 times 2 is 14 radical 2's, and negative 2 times 5 is a minus 10 radical 2's. And now I've got like radicals of radical 2. I can add or subtract the coefficients. 14 minus 10 is 4. So that also seems to work out. So adding and subtracting radicals. In order to add and subtract radicals, they must be able to be expressed as like radicals, meaning they have to have the same radicand and same index number. These are all square roots. They're all understood to be index numbers of 2. But we could also do the same thing with cube roots or fourth roots. We can add them if they have the same index number, this number here, and the same radicand, that number there. All right. But we also have to be able to express them like that. So sometimes they don't look like they could be added or subtracted. As in example 1a, radical 40 and radical 90 do not look the same, even though their index numbers are alike their radicands are not. But if I simplify them as mixed radicals first, maybe they'll have the same radicand, and then maybe we can add them. So 40 can be written as 4 times 10. So I would rewrite the square root of 40 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. It means the same thing. Plus the square root of 90, I would rewrite as the square root of 9 times the square root of 10. And now we know the square root of 4 is a perfect square root of 2, and there is no square root of 10, so root 40 is the same as 2 root 10. And the square root of 9 is exactly 3, and there is no perfect square root of 10, so we leave that as 3 root 10. And now we can add these because they've got the exact same index number and radicand. So we keep that root 10, and we add 2 plus 3. So that's 5 root 10. So it turns out we can add root 40 and root 90 if we simplify them first. Then they've got the same like radicals and we can add them. Example B, radical 96 minus radical 24. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did in example A. Step 1, we're going to have to simplify the radicals because 96 and 24 definitely are not the same, so we can't subtract them. However, if I rewrite radical 96 as a product of two radicals where 1 is a perfect square root, 
Well, I look for factors of 96. One's a perfect square, so that's going to be 16. And 16 times 6 is 96. All right. Minus 24. A factor of 24, that's a perfect square, is 4. And 4 times 6 is 24. So radical 4 times radical 6 would give me radical 24. Now I simplify these. The perfect square root of 16 is 4. There is no square root of 6, so that becomes 4 root 6. So root 96 is the same as 4 root 6. That's true. From that, we're going to subtract root 24, which is the same as root 4 times root 6. Square root of 4 is 2. There is no square root of 6, so it's the same as 2 root 6. And again, from here, we notice that radical 6s are the same, so we can keep that radical 6 and add or subtract the coefficients. 4 minus 2 is 2. So root 96 minus root 24 actually equals, equals 2 radical 6. All right. And let's try example C. Again, radical 75, radical 48, radical 27 all look to be very different. But if I simplify them first and change them into simplest mixed radical form, they're already in mixed radical form. 6 radical 75 is a mixed radical. I want to make it the simplest mixed radical I can. So I'm going to keep the 6 out front. I'm going to multiply that by radical 75, but I'm going to change radical 75. Right? Radical 75 can be rewritten as radical 25 times radical 3. Right? And 25's got a perfect square root, so that's really nice. So let's actually finish that one all by itself first. So the square root of 25 is 5. There is no square root of 3. And I've got 6 times 5 root 3. That means I can go 6 times 5, which is 30 radical 3. So I simplified 6 radical 75 into 30 radical 3. That's the simplest mixed radical. Let's do the same thing with minus 3 radical 48. So we're going to keep the minus 3 and we're going to simplify radical 48. Well, we've done that a bit earlier. We did radical 48 <coughs> up at the top of this page. So 48 can be written as 16 times 3. So radical 48 can be written as radical 16 times radical 3. So we keep that minus 3 out front. We take the square root of 16, which is 4. And we try to take the square root of 3, but there isn't one, so we keep the radical 3. And now we multiply negative 3 by 4. We get minus 12 radical 3s. So minus 3 radical 48 is the same as minus 12 radical 3. And finally, let's do the last one, 2 radical 27. So you keep the plus 2. And now let's convert radical 27. So the factor of 27, that's a perfect square root, is 9. So I'm going to rewrite this as radical 9. And 9 times 3 is 27. So radical 9 times radical 3. So we got plus 2 times. The square root of 9 is exactly 3. There is no square root of that 3, so we keep the radical 3. And then we multiply through. Plus 2 times 3 is a plus 6 radical 3. I'm now finished simplifying all the radicals from above. I can now add them. They're all like radicals. They've all got radicands and index numbers that are the same. So I keep that radical 3, and I add or subtract the coefficients. 30 minus 12 is 18, plus 6 is 24. So this turns out to equal 24 radical 3. All right. Example 2. Simplify by combining like radicals. So once again, these are all very different radicands. But if I simplify them like we did up above and like we learned in lesson one, maybe some of these radicands will be the same and we can simplify them. So radical 20, factor of 20, that's a perfect square, is 4. And we know that 4 times 5 is 20. So I'm going to rewrite this as radical 4 times radical 5. And let's just do this one the whole way through. The square root of 4 is 2, and there is no square root of 5. So radical 20 is the same as 2 radical 5. Plus radical 18, well, I can rewrite that as what two numbers multiplied 18? One's a perfect square. Well, 9 times 2 is 18, and 9 is a perfect square. So square root of 9 times the square root of 2. Now, square root of 9 has a perfect square root of 3. 2 does not, so we keep the radical 2. Do the same thing with minus 80. So what two numbers multiply 80? One's a perfect square. Well, those two numbers are 16 and 5. So I can write this as radical 16 times radical 5. And let's simplify that. The square root of 16 is exactly 4. There is no exact square root of 5, so we keep the radical 5. And finally, plus radical 98. 
So if I want to find a factor of 98 that's a perfect square, that's going to be 49. So I squared 49 times, and the 49 times 2 is 98. So root 49 times root 2 is the same thing as root 98. Now let's simplify. The square root of 49 is 7. There is no square root of 2. Now we're done. All right, so now we've got our simplified mixed radicals. Look for like radicals and index numbers. So keep the radical 5, add or subtract the coefficients. 2 plus negative 4 is a minus 2. We've also got like radicals of radical 2, so keep that radicand, radical 2, and add or subtract the coefficients. Plus 3 plus 7 is a plus 10. All right, so you've simplified that one. Example B, let's try that one. Again, radical 28, radical 128, radical 175, and radical 63 are very unlike. We want to simplify them first. So let's simplify radical 28. So three times a factor of 28, that's a perfect square. Oh, four times seven. So let's write radical 20 is radical four times radical seven. Let's finish this one. The square root of four is two. There is no square root of seven. And multiply the three and the two to give us six radical seven. Do the same thing with negative one half radical 128. So find two factors of 128. One's a perfect square. So radical 64 times radical 2. So the square root of 64 is 8. There is no square root of 2. And multiply by a half. We get 4 root 2. Minus 2 radical 175. So 175 is the same as the square root of 25 times the square root 7. Perfect square root of 25 is 5. There is no square root of 7. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10, radical 7. And the last one, plus 2 radical 63. So I'm going to run a room here, so I'll just write it up here. Plus 2 times radical 63. Well, that's going to be radical 9 times radical 7. So we keep the radical 7. There's a perfect square root of 9, so that's 3 radical 7. I multiply by 2. 2 times 3 is 6, radical 7. And now we're ready to combine like radicals. So we've got six radical seven minus ten radical seven plus another six radical seven. So you keep the radical seven. Six minus ten plus six gives me twelve minus ten, which is two. And we've only got one set of radical twos, so that stays as it is. So that one's simplified. All right, example three. This diagram shows a mental support, the bolded section for part of a bridge constructed on the side of a hill. The measurements are given in meters. Determine the total length of metal needed to support to make the metal support. So once you answer as a mixed radical in simplest form, and then as a decimal to the nearest tenth. All right. So if I want to figure out how much metal I need, I'm going to define this structure as my unknown x and this structure as my unknown y. We're going to make the assumption that vertical and horizontal meet at 90 degrees, so we're going to assume these are both vertical and horizontal lines. And then I've got Pythagorean theorem I can work out to figure out what x and y are. So to solve for x, we know that the square and the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. So x squared is going to equal 16 add 36. So x squared is 52. Or x is the square root of 52. Now, once it has simplest mixed radical, so now we have to find a factor of 52 that's a perfect square. So 52 can be written as 4 times 13. So that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 13. Perfect square of 4 is 2. There is no square root of 13. So that's the value for the amount of, or the length of metal needed to make support x, 2 radical 13. Let's do the same thing for y. So y is our hypotenuse in that triangle. So y squared should equal 12 squared add 8 squared. So that's 144 add 64. That's uh, 208. And y would equal the square root of 208. So again, we have to find a factor of 208 that's a perfect square. You guys rack your brains to figure that one out. Um, I believe
believe it's 16 times 13 is 208. So the square root of 16 is 4. There's no square root of 13, so you keep 4 radical 13. So determine the length of metal need to make the supports. So the total length of metal would be 2 root, 30, 2 root 13 plus 4 root 13. So those are like radicals. You keep the radical 13, add the 2 and the 4. 6 radical 13, that's our simplest mixed radical form. Now let's put that into a fraction, uh, sorry, decimal to the nearest tenth, 6 radical 13. Twenty one point six three 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 would be twenty one point six to the nearest tenth. All right. Awesome. You guys can now complete questions one through twelve as assigned. Where you go.